Today on Ortho 2, we are going to be talking about Ignorognathus, an animal easily mistaken as a bat, but in reality it was actually a pterosaur. These amazing animals show us how crazy convergent evolution can be. Before we talk about how amazing this little animal was, let's talk about their evolution first. Ignorognathus was a pterosaur. Pterosaurs were flying reptiles of the clade or order Pterosauria. They were not dinosaurs, but they were closely related to them. Pterosaurs are the earliest of the vertebrates known to have evolved powered flight. They appeared 228 million years ago during the late Triassic. Before this time, the only animals to take flight were insects. Yes, insects are animals, and I'm really surprised that some people don't know this. Insects first took flight in the Devonian period about 406 million years ago. So pterosaurs were not the first to fly, but their morphology gave them advantages. Besides just their backbone, they were also relatively large compared to most flying insects. They were effectively the first large-bodied flying carnivores besides maybe some large insects from the Carboniferous. Their wings were formed by a membrane of skin, muscle, and other tissues stretching from their ankles to a dramatically lengthened fourth finger. Their wings were much different from bats. Only one finger supports their wing instead of the three to four in bats. Their wings were typically much thinner and longer than that of bats or even birds. They also had a sort of tail fin on their hind limbs. A neurognathus is an anurognathid. The phylogeny of a neurognathidae is uncertain. Some analyses, as those of Kellner, place them as very basal in the pterosaur tree. However, they do have some characteristics in common with the derived pterodactyloidea, such as a short and fused tail bones. In 2010, an analysis by Brian Andres indicated that Neurognathidae and pterodactyloidea were sister taxa. This conforms better to the fossil record because no early ignorognathids are known and would require a ghost lineage of over 60 million years. Ignorognathids are a family of small pterosaurs with short and absent tails that lived in Europe, Asia, and possibly North America during the Jurassic and Cretaceous periods. Five genera are known with plenty of species. There are two specimens currently known of ignorognathids, but there are many other fossils for this family. From their teeth, we can tell that they are mainly insectivores, though some may have had other prey choices like small vertebrates and fish. Also because of their eyes, they are thought to have been nocturnal or crepuscular, just like bats. At least some, such as Vesperoterolus, were arboreal with claws suited for gripping tree branches. Ignurgnathus had a short head with pin-like teeth for catching insects. Its jaws are wider than they are long. This is similar to some modern bat species like the wrinkled-faced bats. To predict how big of prey they would have eaten, the length of the jaws were measured. The research team ended up concluding that prey consumed would have been very small in length, around 11 millimeters in total. So it was probably eating pretty small insects and maybe some really small vertebrates. Like mentioned earlier, ignorognathids had very large eyes. In 1975, the eye sockets were mistaken for antorbital fenestra. There are skull openings that in most pterosaurs are larger than the orbits, but in Ignorognathus they are smaller. The eyes pointed forward to a degree, providing some binocular vision. Most of the skull consisted of bone struts, and its tail was comparatively short, allowing it more maneuverability for hunting. The reduced tail of Ignorognathus was similar to the Paga style of modern birds. Its wings were rather short and broad. With an estimated wingspan of 50 centimeters or 20 inches and 9 centimeter long body with the skull included. In 2008, Mark Witten estimated a mass of 40 grams for a specimen with a 35 centimeter long wingspan. In the second specimen described by S. Christopher Bennett in 2007, Bennett interpreted bumps on the jaws as an indication that hairs formed by a protruding bristle when present on the snout, perhaps as a sort of whisker. He also found the wings to be shorter than originally thought. Most or all pterosaurs had hair-like filaments known as pycnal fibers on the head and torso. Pycnal fibers were unique structures similar to but not homologous with mammalian hair rather an example of convergent evolution. 
The presence of pycnal fibers strongly indicates that pterosaurs were endothermic and that the hair aided in thermal regulation. Ignorognathus was thought with its long wings to be a swift flyer. It may have been similar to the nightjar. Bennett, however, infers from the discovery of the true shorter size of the wings, combined with the short tail, that it was a slow-flying predator, specialized in hunting by maneuverability. So it surprised its prey by outmaneuvering it, not with its own speed. This is supported by a very large flexibility of the wing finger joints. So overall they were more like bats. With the great locomotion and flexibility that their wings showed, Ignorognathus were able to catch insects and maneuver between low areas and potentially around and under trees. Fossils of this creature have been found in the Solhofen limestone formation a well-documented series of rocks that preserve the remains of an island environment reminiscent of the modern Bahamas. Low-lying islands separated by warm, shallow seas. This island change was dry and rocky with sparse vegetation, and Ignorognathus was one of the many small animals that lived there. Ignorognathus would disappear from the fossil record about 148 million years ago. We don't have that much fossil material on this species in particular, so who knows when it really went extinct. Anurognathids as a whole would survive until about 122 million years ago. They made it to the Cretaceous, but ultimately went extinct. I think they're one of the coolest animals from the time just because of how unique they were as pterosaurs, because typically you think of pterosaurs as looking like the typical pterodactyl model of a pterosaur. But these just show how crazy evolution can be, and how convergence can be uncanny sometimes. Thanks for watching, and I hope you enjoyed the video. Make sure to like and subscribe, it's the best thing you can do to support the channel. I make a variety of videos on ancient animals, ancient humans, and even history. If that sounds interesting, go watch the hundred or so videos I have made. Well, I'll see you in the next episode of Ortho 2. See ya.